Today we will see how to evaluate the integral from 0 to pi over 2 sin square x dx. I'm not going to use the traditional approach. Instead, I'm going to use a special theorem which will save plenty of your time. I will just mention the traditional approach as well. In the traditional approach, we can go for cosine 2 theta expansion from trig and convert this second order sine function into a first order cosine function and integrate that one to obtain an analytical solution and then we can substitute the given limits pi by 2 and 0 respectively. However, rather than using that approach, today you're going to learn a new approach which will save plenty of your time. So here's the new approach for which I'm going to use a theorem. Let's say you have to evaluate an integral from 0 to a f of x dx. This will also be equal to integral 0 to a f a minus x dx. We will also see how to prove this theorem. It will not take time. Here is the proof. I will start from the right hand side. On the right hand side I have integration 0 to a f a minus x dx. Now I am going to use a substitution. The substitution is u equals a minus x. I will differentiate both sides. I will get du equals negative dx. That's because a is a constant. When differentiate a with respect to x, it will become 0. All right. After using that substitution, I should also change the limits accordingly. Earlier, we had x going from 0 to a. Now, this x has become u. So, when x is equal to 0, u, according to this substitution, u should be equal to a minus 0, which is equal to a. When x is equal to a, according to our substitution, u should be equal to a minus a, which is 0. All right. Now, I'm going to use that new variable in this integral. Integration. It was earlier 0 to a. Those were the limits of x. Now, those limits have been changed to a and 0 respectively. So, this integration is going to be from a to 0. I have the function f a minus x is equal to u. f of u and then I have dx. We saw that du is equal to negative dx which means dx is equal to negative du. I will keep that negative symbol outside and write du. Now you know that I can get rid of that negative symbol by flipping those upper and lower limits of the given integral. Negative integral a to 0 f of u du should also be equal to positive 0 to a f of u du. We know that the answer for a definite integral is going to be always irrespective of the variable that was used in the function. So 0 to a f of u du will also be equal to 0 to a any other variable f y dy, f x dx, f w dw and so on. So I can simply write this as 0 to a f of x dx thereby completing the theorem. All right. Let's look at evaluating the question we have. So the question we have is integral 0 to pi over 2 sin squared x dx. I'm going to label this as integration i. Let me number this integral as number 1. So the theorem was 0 to a integral f of x dx is equal to 0 to a integral f of a minus x dx, where a is the upper limit. Well, to satisfy the theorem, I need lower limit to be 0. Of course, that's the case with this given question. Right here, I have 0 as the lower limit. Instead of a, I have pi by 2 in the given question. All right. Now, I can write that same given integral i this way. The limits stay the same, 0 to pi over 2. Sine squared 
Now the x right here will be replaced by the upper limit which is pi by 2 minus x sine squared pi over 2 minus x and then we have dx. Now what is sine pi over 2 minus x? That is equal to cosine x. Now this is a second order function. Therefore this integral i should be equal to from 0 to pi over 2 cosine squared x dx. I'm going to label this as equation number 2. Now I have the given integral i being equal to 0 to pi over 2 sine squared x dx and the other integration I have is that same i is equal to 0 to pi over 2 integral cosine squared x dx. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to add those given integrals. If I add those two integrals, on the left hand side I will have 2i. On the right hand side I will have integral from 0 to pi over 2 sine squared x plus cosine squared x dx. So let me write it down as that real quick. 2i is equal to integral 0 to pi over 2. The first one was sine squared x and the second one was cosine squared x and we have dx. What is sine squared x plus cosine squared x? That's the Pythagorean identity from Craig and that's equal to 1. Therefore, 2i is now equal to 0 to pi over 2, 1 dx. So what's the integration of 1? Integration of 1 is equal to x. Therefore, I have 2i being equal to x. Limits are from 0 to pi over 2. So let's replace those given values. Then I have 2i being equal to upper limit is pi over 2. Replace the lower limit, it is 0. So 2i is equal to pi over 2. Therefore, i should be equal to pi over 4 by dividing both sides by 2. And we know that i was the integral 0 to pi over 2 sine squared x dx. So this is equal to pi over 4. That's a nice fast approach to solve this problem real quick. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this example.